I've been reading about social psychology and how the mind works, how we think, obviously, for, for a long time now, uh, or at least, you know, a good, good number of years. And there's a concept that's come up a lot, um, particularly in social psychology, that I've always had a strong opinion on. I think a lot of people do. And it's the concept of, you know, you, you see a lot of experiments that are done, social experiments, social psychology type experiments, where they try and assess how people react in different situations. And particularly when you put somebody in a situation to, to do something moral, um, if the peer pressure, if the context, whatever it is, the environment is such where it's not easy to make that moral decision, or maybe it's, it's a little bit harder than it normally would be, you know, what do people do? The one that comes to mind is the, the Milgram experiments, uh, which really quickly, if you're not familiar, was experiments where um, the, the person who was being experimented on uh, thought they were in a room with control of an electric device, and there was somebody else in another room who was answering trivia questions. And if they got the questions wrong, the person that was being experimented had to zap them. And as they got more wrong, they had to up the voltage. And the whole premise was that there was, you know, it was a very formal feeling experiment. You know, obviously it was a, it was a fake setup, but it felt very formal to the person doing the shocking. They thought it was real. There was a person with a white coat in the room telling them to, to administer the shocks and that it was all for science. And there were all these things to allow your mind to believe um, I got to do it, even though I, I don't want to. And he heard the person screaming, you know, in pain as he shocked them. But a, a ridiculous percentage of people, something like over 70% actually did it. But when they asked people just in society, do you think you would have been one of the people shocking somebody? The overwhelming amount of people said, no, I would never do that. So there's a disconnect there, right? Of what we actually believe we would do in a situation and what we do do. Uh, I give that preface because <clears throat> I think today possibly was an instance of that, possibly. Um, and I wanted to reflect on, on that a little bit. So the context was um, I attended a what was called an equity team meeting for uh, my school district, my son's school district. It was something that I volunteered for, and it was the first meeting uh, of the group. And there was a lot of people, you know, 75, 80 people on, on, the, on the call. And it was an intro meeting. So it was, you know, feeling out process of what exactly the group was meant to um, achieve what the goals were, what the norms would be, the structure, etc. So a lot of that was being figured out. And there was a lot of people coming together for the first time. So there's also a lot of just stories being shared and opinions and views. Um, and so like I guess maybe 80 people on the call. I don't know the exact number because I couldn't see all the pictures and videos, but given the town I live in and just the normal demographic, I'd call it at least 90% white. Um, that might be a little bit high, but 80, 20 at best, you know, if you consider all different minorities and, and different people, you know, whether it be Asian or Hispanic or black or others. Um, so predominantly white people on the call. Um, and it was an equity team, which is around racial equity and just equality in the school district. So the topic was, was very much geared around that. So the, so that's the context, the situation in which I, you know, I think was one of those times where, in theory, I would like to think I would have done a certain action, but in reality, I didn't, was there was two people in particular on the call who spoke um, seemingly very genuinely, very passionately about forms of racism that they felt living in this neighborhood. Um, one was an Hispanic man who, I guess when there was some Black Lives Matter rallies going on, uh, felt unsafe and saw people posting on social media that he knew were his neighbors, you know, some, some racist or offensive things about it. Um, so he kind of spoke to some of that and, you know, what that was like having kids and all those things. And he's actually in law enforcement enforcement as well. So interesting perspective, uh, but just heartfelt words about it. And then similarly, there was an African-American woman who spoke about, um, she has a high school age son who just given everything that's going on and what, again, what happened with those protests and the negative reaction from, from some others with some white people, um, you know, she's afraid to let her son ride his bike around the neighborhood just because tensions are so high and there's so much animosity and, you know, mistakes can be made or intentional stuff. And how her son was so upset because he wanted to just go ride his bike with his friends and she just didn't feel comfortable letting him do it. So horrible things if you really think about it right you know I don't I don't know these people so let's take the stories at face value and assume they're true um didn't seem to be much motivation to lie but you never know but assuming it all happens the way they said it happened or even close to what they said happened just horrible things to think that a mom has to have a son in America in 2020 
and he wants to go out and play with his friend and ride his bike, and she has to be genuinely concerned about his well-being to do that, right? For me, it would be not even a thought, <laughs> just obviously. Um, the fact that, that she has to go through that, her son has to go through that, and, you know, the things, she said there was another instance where somebody called her a racial slur when she was sitting in traffic. It's just horrible, horrible thing. Same for the Hispanic man and, and kind of what he spoke about. So what I thought about afterwards was, you know, I, I often hear people say, particularly people of color or minorities, that, you know, white people need to speak up more. They need to, they need, they need to be the ones to call a lot of this stuff out because it's, so much of it is implicit, so much of it is good people, right? The, the, the quote, good people, if good people don't stand up, you know, that's, that's when you know you have a problem. I'm not quoting it correctly, but that's the gist of it. Um, and you know, really have to make it clear that it's just, it's, it's not okay, right? Um, the, the, whatever it is that stops them from doing that, not wanting to look weird in a certain situation, um, being torn because they're not sure, like if the looting and the rioting, if they're okay with that, right? Whatever it is, politics get involved, things get complicated in, in the thinking of it. Um, surely some people are racist, I'm sure, but for the, for the good people, um, there's those same reasons not to speak up, just like in the Milgram experiment, there are all these cues and signs that say, shock the person, even though I don't want to shock the person. In this case, it's, I feel like I should say something, but you know, what would I say? Or it feels like somebody at some point needs to step up, but in the moment, all these things tell you, tell you not to, you know, don't be the oddball on the phone. It might come off wrong. You might say something offensive, all hosts of reasons. But as I thought about it, it felt like one of those moments where the right thing to do there would have been to speak up and just very simply say, listen, obviously I can't understand your perspective as a person of color and minority and what you went through. So I'm not claiming to try and, you know, do that in any way. But from a purely like empathetic, just a human perspective, like I'm really, really sorry that that happened to you and your family and your son or whoever it is. Like that's just horrific. Um, and just kind of full stop, right? There's no more agenda behind it. There's nothing else. That's just a horrible thing that you have to go through. And again, I understand politics and all these other things get involved and people kind of go all different directions and it, 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 it skews things, right? It, it makes it messy and muddy. But I hope that you would understand that there's lots of people that feel this way, right? At its core, at this base human level, put aside all the politics and stuff, that shouldn't happen to a person. Nobody's family should have to go through that ever. And whatever it takes, whatever the, whatever the process has to be, whatever it takes to get that to stop is definitely something that I support. If we could, if we could make that stop so you never have to go through that experience again, that's what, that's what we want and we support at its core. And just know that, right? It doesn't fix all the problems we have. It doesn't mend all the disagreements and, and, and the views and the, and the politics in it. But at least if we know at our core, most people, most good, reasonable people, of which I believe there are a lot of, when they hear stories like that, they have the same reaction. It should never happen. That's horrible, and I'm so sorry that it did. And hopefully we can figure out some way to make it never happen again, right? Those types of things I feel like are important to be said. I think, again, I'm trying to empathize, and I don't mean to speak for a minority or somebody of color, but if it were me, having somebody genuinely do that and mean it, just for the sake of it needs to be said, right, from a white person who's observing. We can assume everybody feels horrible, right, and people were chatting, and there was, you know, some things that thanks for sharing, right, you know, those types of things, and horrible, but just a heartfelt, genuine, that's, that's a disgusting thing that happened to you, and that never should have happened. Like, as much as I can, I empathize with what you've gone through and you continue to go through, and we're with you on that. Like, we obviously agree on that. That shouldn't happen. I think that's something I'd want to hear. I'd want, I'd want to feel like somebody was trying to, as I've said before, get in the mud with me as best they can and just relate to me on a human level, right? There's so many dynamics to it. It's so complex when race gets involved, but in some ways it's so simple. And to hear somebody put it that way and to do it in a setting like that with 80 people you don't know, it's not comfortable, there's risks involved, but it's important enough and it's worth it enough that you're willing to take those risks and say those things, I think that would mean a lot. Um, so for me, the takeaway from this situation, most directly, most practically, is I'm somewhat grateful that I was in it because now I can learn from it and say, hey, that's the type of situation, if I'm in it again, 
you know, be ready, be ready and, and do the right thing that, that you believe is the right thing. Um, and two, you know, to the Milgram experiment, all that stuff, the thought that you will recognize it in the moment, the thought that you will be able to think clearly and see the right thing to do, assuming what I'm saying is this was the right thing to do. I, I think it was. Um, we have an overinflated sense of confidence in that, that we'll be able to spot it and that we're as good as we think we are. Even me, somebody who's very actively listening and watching it and thinking about stuff like this, it wasn't until hours later that it really struck me that that might have been the right thing to do. And this is the exact type of thing people talk about when they say, you know, white people need to speak up more. Um, so don't be so confident, usual message, but applying it in a different area. Don't be so confident that you'll see it, that you'll know that that's the time to, to act. Um, so, you know, be on the lookout, <laughs> try and be more thoughtful, try and be more aware in terms of that. But if nothing else, like I'm trying to do here, catch it after the fact and be ready that next time, right? Because you may always miss it the first time. It may be subtle, it may be tough. You strive for perfection, but when you come up short and you'll miss somewhat, at least you'll be heading into that better place and maybe get it the next time. Um, so that's something I'm gonna try and carry forward and hopefully be put in that position again.